Morning YouTube. How are you guys doing out there? You got some sunshine? This is our second day of sunshine and we've had most of February was uh, was cloudy here. Seems like. I was off grid for five years and I noticed, you know, because I needed the sunshine for my photovoltaic panels that uh, like September, October was cloudy. But man, this year is just a little bit different. So this uh, this week's Parsha is uh, Pakuda. I'm not sure that's how you pronounce it, but uh, and it's Exodus 38, 21 through uh, 40, 38. As a Parsha overview, we have, oh, Pakuda means some. And as an overview, we have some of the tabernacle, and that's what that's referring to. And it's the sum of... Uh, the quantities of gold and silver, as well as how they were used in the construction of the Mishkan. We have the making of the high priest clothes. We have the setting up of the Mishkan. And we have the glory of Yahweh filling the temple. So that had to be exciting for these folks, having been in slavery for a long time. And uh, the father delivers them across the Red Sea, strikes the Egyptian army, and they get their... Mo Moshe comes down from the from the uh, the mount with the, the law, and of course, not after the first time, but uh, if they get their temple built, and Yahweh comes, so that's fantastic. But uh, <clears throat> Exodus forty twelve. Now shalt bring Aaron and his sons into the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and wash them with water. How did I was just something I was wondering. So, so this is thus saith Jerry. This is not thus saith the Lord. Just something I was wondering about. How did Aaron get to be the high priest? Um, and I guess there's a number of what ifs in the Bible. For instance, Abraham's father, Terah, you know, he left his people too. So did the father offer him the same deal, but he messed up? You know, I, I don't know. But, uh, I'd like to pose a question, and that question is, is it possible that Moshe forfeited the opportunity to become high priest as well as leader of the Exodus by his early on resistance to carry out the Most High's plan of redeeming his people out of Egypt? And secondly, is this a picture of the Melchizedek priesthood? So uh, let's, let's look at the resistance that... Moshe put up to the father. And I'm going to go to Exodus. Oh, my God, here. Exodus 3 10 through 13. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moshe said unto Elohim, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee. This shall be the token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve Elohim upon this mountain. And Moshe said unto Elohim, Behold, when I come into the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The Elohim of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? So, never been in this position, obviously. But if the Creator comes to you and uh, tells you, I'm going to send you someplace, I don't know that it's a good idea to say, to start questioning him. But, like I said, I can't judge. I've never, it's never happened to me. Let's go to Exodus 4 1. And Moshe answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, Yahweh hath not appeared unto thee. So Moshe's kind of doubting. Yahweh tells him this is going to work, and uh, Moshe's still doubting. So let's go to uh, Exodus 4.10 through 16. And Moshe said unto Yahweh, O Yahweh, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am of slow speech and of, 
a slow time. So he's saying, you know, maybe you made a mistake in picking me. Um, I can't talk. I can't speak. I can't do public speaking. <laughs> so on to verse 11. And Yahweh said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who, who maketh the dumb or deaf or seeing or the blind? Have not I, Yahweh? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. And he said, Yahweh, send, I pray thee, by the hand of whom thou wilt send. And the anger of Yahweh was kindled against Moshe, and he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy, thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee, and when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. So here the anger of Yahweh was kindled against Moshe, because he still questioned him. At least that's my take on it. And thou shalt speak, verse 15, And thou shalt speak unto him, and put words in his mouth. I will be with thy mouth, and with his mouth, and will teach you what ye shall do. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people, and he shall be, even he shall be to thee instead of a mouth. And thou shalt be to him instead of Elohim. So let's, let's take this up to another level, and... Uh, could this be a picture of the Melchizedek priesthood? What is the Melchizedek priesthood? Genesis 14, 18. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High Elohim. So we, we see here that the position is a sovereign, because he's the king of Salem, and he was the priest of the Most High Elohim. So Moshe, you know, become was something of a sovereign, but Aaron became the high priest. Um, who is the Melchizedek priest? Well, let's look at Psalms 110, 1 through 4. Yahweh said, well, I'm just going to read what it says in the King James. This will be easier. The Lord, the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. So David saying that, that the, Lord, the Lord is speaking to his Lord. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion, rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power, and the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning that thou hast the dew of the youth. Yahweh hath sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So here we have what I believe to be a prophecy of the Messiah, Yeshua. And uh, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, and that's Yeshua. So, and Yeshua, when he comes back in the millennium, He's gonna. He's our. He's our already our high priest. Um, I, I believe that happened whenever Caiaphas rent his uh, rent his habergeon or the hole in his his garment, because you can't do that. And he's gonna be our sovereign. So he's gonna hold both of those positions. So is it possible that uh, Moshe could have held both of those positions while he was alive? You know, maybe if you know, maybe I, I don't know. So let's go to Hebrews 7, 11 through 14. And you really ought to sit and read this chapter. I should sit and read this chapter, you know, more and really study it out. But anyhow, we're going to read uh, Hebrews 7, 11 through 14. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe, of which no man gave attendance at the altar. For it is evident that Yahweh, excuse me, I'm, I'm just going to read it again, King James. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moshe spake nothing concerning the priesthood. So, who will be ru ruling with the rod of iron during the millennium? The Messiah, Yeshua. He's the one that sprang out of Yehuda. So, the conclusion to my thoughts here are, 
Perhaps if Moshe had been unquestioningly obedient, he might have been a ruler and high priest. As Aaron wasn't assigned duties until after Moshe's obstinance. Instead, we see the duties divided up. This could be viewed as a picture of the Levitical priesthood, which made the temple a den of thieves, Matthew 21, 13, having to be purified by the Messiah as in Melchizedek. So they had an inferior priesthood when Yeshua had to come for the new covenant. Of course, our secular world is a train wreck being managed by those with nuclear weapons. Messiah will straighten that up as well. So that's the sovereign side of the world, you know. So the moral for us, I think, is act unquestioningly when Yahweh tells us to do something. That it is better to work in his perfect will instead of having to make repentance and working in his permissive will. And, uh, you know, this applies to me more than anybody. So uh, thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you next week.